Object detection is a fascinating problem in the world of computer vision. It requires a computer to look at an image, figure out what objects are in that image, and where they're located. It's a tough problem because it requires a lot of filtering and maybe some machine learning to not only determine where the individual objects are, but also be able to classify them as well. Object detection has a lot of uses in things like wildlife tracking, tracking the location of a face for facial recognition, and self-driving cars. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use TensorFlow to do object detection on your Raspberry Pi. Let's get started. TensorFlow Lite should run on the Raspberry Pi 3 as well as the Raspberry Pi 4. I'm going to use the Pi 4 as it's a good deal faster than the Pi 3. From what I've seen, you get about 1 frame per second on the Pi 3 and up to about 5 frames per second on the Pi 4. To begin, I'm going to connect a Raspberry Pi camera to my Pi. A USB webcam should also work. If you're using the Raspberry Pi camera module, enter sudo raspi-config in a new terminal window. Go into interfacing options and enable the camera. You'll be asked to reboot the Pi, so wait while that happens. Once the Pi has finished rebooting, enter sudo apt update to ensure that you're working with the latest packages. Once that's done, I like to edit .bash rc and add alias python equals python3 and alias pip equals pip3 at the bottom, which means that typing python into the terminal will use python3 instead of the default python2. Enter source.bash rc to enact these changes without needing to restart the terminal. I like to keep my projects in their own folder, so I'll set up a workspace with makedeer-p projects slash python slash tflite. Go into that tflite directory. While it's not necessary, a virtual environment can be very helpful to keep specific Python and package versions separate from your main Python working environment. Install it with python-m pip install virtual env. Because TensorFlow and TensorFlow Lite are constantly changing, what works with a specific version of a library today might not work tomorrow. So, to help manage these versions, I'll use this virtual environment to keep everything separate. Let's create a virtual environment for our TensorFlow Lite projects by calling python-m vnv tflite-env. Now, every time we wish to run a TensorFlow Lite program, we need to enable that virtual environment by calling the activate script, which we can do with source tflite-env slash bin slash activate from within the tflite directory. With the virtual environment activated, we need to install a set of libraries and packages. Notice that some of them need to be specific versions. We'll use apt to install the developer versions of libraries to handle loading images and videos. These libraries include JPEG, TIFF5, Jasper, PNG12, AV Codec, AV Format, SW Scale, V4L, XVID Core, and X264. Once that's done, we need to install a few other libraries to get TensorFlow and OpenCV to work. Use apt again to install Qt4 dev tools, libatlas base dev, and libhdf5-103. When we have all of those libraries installed, we can use pip to install the opencv-contrib-python package. Note that version 4.1.0.25 seems to work the best for now. Next, enter uname-m to figure out what type of processor we have. The ARM V7L is a 32-bit ARM processor. Then enter Python dash dash version and make a note of which version of Python you're using. It looks like I'm using Python 3.7. Head to tensorflow.org slash light slash guide slash Python and find the wheel file link that matches your architecture and Python version. Since I'm using a 32-bit Raspberry Pi, I'll look at the Linux ARM32 section and copy the link for Python 3.7. Note that this will install TensorFlow Lite version 2.1. In the console, type python-m pip install and paste the link. Press enter and pip should begin to install TensorFlow Lite. While that's going, let's talk about how object detection works. There are a number of ways to implement object detection. The current popular way is to use a neural network. 
A naive approach would be to use the same method I used in my LEGO BrickFinder project. You move a sliding window across an image using that cropped sub-image as the input to your trained neural network. That will give you a score measuring how close your cropped image is to some known object. However, this is extremely slow as it requires you to perform inference for every sub-image, and it can only detect objects of a particular size in the frame. In the last few years, researchers have been working on better and faster techniques for object detection. In 2016, Google released a paper describing the Single Shot Multibox Detector, or SSD, which is a method for detecting multiple objects of different sizes in an image using only one pass through a neural network. It requires using separate convolutional layers that can detect objects of varying sizes and that pass their results to a classifier that both identifies the object as well as give us the object's approximate coordinates in the image. YOLO is one such popular single-shot detector network. However, we'll be using MobileNet, which Google designed in 2017. MobileNet is a lightweight neural network that can be configured for a variety of vision tasks, such as image classification. It can also be configured for single-shot detection, which is very helpful for object detection on things like smartphones and single-board computers. Once TensorFlow Lite has finished installing, let's make our project. Create an object detection folder and navigate into it. Open a browser and head to tensorflow.org slash light slash models slash object underscore detection slash overview. Feel free to read about object detection, but what we really want is to download the MobileNet starter model and labels. If that link is not working, I'll make sure to include a link in the description where you can download the zip file containing the model and labels. Move the downloaded zip file to your object detection folder. In the terminal, make a coco ssd mobilenet v1 folder and enter unzip coco underscore ssd, press tab to complete, dash d coco ssd mobilenet v1 to unzip the model contents into that folder. If you look in the folder, you should see two files. The label map text file just contains an ordered list of object classifications that this model is capable of identifying. You can use a program like Netron to view the TF Lite model file and see how all of the layers of the neural network are connected. Notice that it requires a 300 by 300 by 3 tensor input, which equates to an image with three color channels and a resolution of 300 by 300 pixels. This model has been pre-trained on the COCO dataset. So let's take a moment to talk about COCO. COCO stands for Common Objects in Context, and it's a large collection of images that have been labeled to help with machine learning tasks for image classification, object detection, and image segmentation. Researchers at Microsoft, Facebook, and several universities worked to put this dataset together. It has over 200,000 images that have been annotated with ground truth labels, and it includes around 90 object categories in those labels. A model that has been pre-trained with the COCO dataset, like the MobileNet model we just downloaded, should be capable of detecting many common objects like people, cats, dogs, bicycles, cars, stop signs, sports balls, cups, bananas, televisions, and clocks. If you need to identify one or more of these objects, using a model pre-trained with COCO is a great starting point. You can train a model or even slightly tweak a pre-trained model using something called transfer learning to get it to recognize objects not in the original dataset. However, both of those require a good amount of effort, which we'll save for a future episode. Back in our Raspberry Pi, open up a browser window. Edge Electronics has a great TensorFlow Lite object detection script on GitHub, which we'll use as a starting point. Head to the TensorFlow Lite object detection on Android and Raspberry Pi repository and view the TF Lite detection webcam script in raw form. Copy the code and paste it into a text editor. Just before the while true loop, add cv2.namedWindow, open parentheses, in quotes, object detector, comma, cv2 dot window underscore normal in all capital letters, close parentheses. This will allow us to resize the view window when we run the script. Save the file to the object detection folder. Open a terminal and navigate into the TF Lite directory. Activate the TF Lite virtual environment and go into the object detection directory. 
We run the script with Python and pass it the Coco SSD mobile net v1 directory as the location of the model and labels file. It should run, giving us a window with a live stream of the camera. It will also overlay a bounding box on any object it recognizes. Depending on how far away your camera is from your subject, you might notice that it's a bit blurry. To adjust the focus, use a pair of needle nose pliers to carefully rotate the lens on the Pi camera. Do this until your image comes into focus. Notice that on the Raspberry Pi 4, it's running at about 4 to 5 frames per second, which is quite impressive. I found that the model is not the most accurate, but it is a good starting point. Press the Q key to quit when you're done. Feel free to look through the script as it is well organized and commented. The majority of the script involves setting up the camera to capture images using OpenCV. Things get interesting inside the main while loop. A single frame is taken from the camera and it's first converted to the red, green, blue color ordering. The TF Lite model expects an image with three color channels and a resolution of 300 by 300, so we need to resize the image to fit that. Notice that this does not attempt to keep the aspect ratio. We won't go into quantization here, but know that it's a way to make models smaller and faster at the cost of some accuracy. We copy the resized image data into the TensorFlow Lite interpreter and call the invoke function, which runs the image through the neural network. When it's done, it gives us a list of bounding boxes, predicted classes, and confidence scores of each identified object. The script then uses the bounding box info to draw rectangles around each detected object. If you want to find the center of each object, we can use the same information to calculate the center point. I'll use OpenCV to draw a small dot at the center and then print out the detected object information. Let's save and exit. I'll run the script again. This time, you can see that my addition put little dots in the center of each detected object. You can use this to determine when one object is getting close to another, or maybe to have a pan-tilt camera track a face or even a robot chase your dog around. I hope this has helped you get started with object detection on the Raspberry Pi. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this one, and as always, happy hacking! <laughs>